And hello, welcome back to the Red October Network. Uh, here's our 8 p.m. analysis. Uh, I'm a little bit tired tonight, so we're going to do a little bit of a different analysis a little bit earlier. So, anyways, uh, we are still talking about Irene. And uh, so let's uh, get right into it right now. We'll have a look at the visible image since it's daytime. And I want to pull up a little of... Uh, a little uh, graphics here to explain. Now, looking at this uh, visible, often the visible is a good place to start because of its high resolution, especially if you're talking about a daytime forecast. As you can see, the Turks and the Caicos right here, and you can see Crook Island and Strait Island, I believe it's called. And you can see the eye of Hurricane Irene. And uh, there's a couple things interesting about this. First of all, you can see that uh, of all the analyses that we've done, you can see that Hurricane Irene right now is in very, very good shape. It has good outflow. Uh, it's venting out. You can see the clouds going back out. It's sucking in a lot of air. Uh, has good, uh, good development. It's symmetrical. You notice here there's uh the water temperature is thirty degrees. Now uh one of the things that is noticeable here is that uh it has become a much more favorable environment. And it doesn't really one of, it doesn't really look like uh it's struggling though, although you can see somewhat that there is uh, an overshooting top here at the that's obscuring the eye right now. This is at uh uh 2145 UTC, which is actually about uh, two minutes ago. So uh, you can see that, and uh, basically we we're looking at that. And uh, so we're going to pull up uh, the uh, rainbow. I don't know why I like this. You've seen it in all the all the all the uh forecasts and it's good to look just because it uh it uh is able to draw up uh, a lot of uh how would you say it a lot of uh cloud temperatures cloud temperatures can often tell uh excuse me what what is happening so we're taking a look at this and you can see that um at, I'll stop it right here and I want to go I want to go back a little to this, and this was actually earlier today. This was at 1745 UTC. It was shortly before, uh, it was about 245 today. And you can see that the eye was very clearly formed here. Now if we go a little bit further, in farther or further into the future, you can see that it's kind of looks like to me like the eye is starting to be obscured and what's happening here is that um, you're having a, what's called an eye wall replacement cycle when uh, when a storm gets stronger like category 3 or category 4 the inner eye wall can collapse and an outer one will form so it looks like apparently that one is forming on the outside and this is this is just something that storms will go through whenever they get strong strong so Anyways, so we'll uh, pull up that, and I wanted to pull up the wind history a little bit and uh, show you that, obviously, uh, Irene's as big as it's ever been. Uh, the uh, tropical, or the hurricane winds are about, I'd say about 100 miles, 100, 150 miles across, and the tropical storm winds are almost 500 miles across. They're about five degrees, five degrees of latitude across. So that's just a rough estimate. So that's about 500 miles. So we're seeing this obviously the surface wind. You can see that it's encountering some shear, as it's basically uh, very. It looks very regular on the, uh, or very symmetrical on the satellite images, but this analysis says it's actually tropical storm winds tend to extend more northeasterly than southwesterly, and this is probably because there are winds that are coming out of this direction here, so it's blowing everything. 
you can think about is blowing in this direction. So, uh, so anyways, uh, I wanted to take a quick look at a couple of models, actually. First of all, here's the GFS. And you can see in the GFS that it's, uh, since the last run, it has deepened this trough up a lot. So it's, uh, it's obviously uh, picking up on a lot of things. So that's very interesting, to say the least. And in terms of just... Uh, what it's going to do with the hurricane, you can see that this is not good for New York and Massachusetts and Connecticut because it brings Irene right down the middle. But you can see this trough here is uh, kind of grabbing it. And, and what, what's happening here is that there's a front that's pretty much going to stall out in the next couple days. And oftentimes we saw with Katrina once where if a front gets caught the hurricane will try to go up the front and that's essentially what's going to happen now whether uh, the fifty thousand dollar question or sixty four thousand dollar question is is this trough going to move out and combine or is it just basically going to sit here because if it sits here it's going to zip up the front and that'll be that I also want to look at the uh, RSM real quick and this is a different model so and we're just looking at this and you can kind of see all the heavy rain over our area but what's interesting is just um, how close this core is and you can kind of see the front right around right along here and you can see the heavy rain now pay attention to uh, up here to this this is the uh, three-hour precipitation you can kind of see that front watch the line that it extends from the Great Lakes down through Ohio, Indiana, Illinois. I can't, I'm just trying to, so there's the front and you can see as it dies, the hurricane gets picked up in it and you can see the fronts here and, and the hurricane gets shifted off, shifted off. So although this is going to cause some severe weather here in Pennsylvania, this is a good thing because it's going to keep Irene off the coast. So anyways, uh, I want to take a look at the tropical storm wind, make our forecast here. And so um, you obviously can see that it's been shifted off quite a bit. Um, it has made its turn, per se, and so that's good news because that's, uh, at least for the people in Delmarva, I don't think that the Delmarva will see much more than tropical storm force winds. Hurricane force winds are possible in the United States. Uh, I think the best chances are here in North Carolina. I think, obviously, the first landfall is going to be down here, but the second landfall is going to be somewhere in this area. So I'm thinking more of Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts as being the, the site for landfall. And uh, I'm still steering to the west a little bit. I've been stubborn, I know. But uh, obviously they're being very reluctant to put the hurricane force winds that far north because of the uncertainty in the models. And some models are actually predicting, uh, let's go back to the tropical storm force winds, and they're predicting a turn where Irene could miss the United States completely. And some malls are going over here, but some are bringing it right up to Delmarva. The consensus has been mostly up towards this direction. It's bad news for the people who live up here in uh, upper New England because it means they're in the bullseye. So I'm going to put it up here. I'm going to put it through New York obviously in uh, Saturday night and uh, we'll go to the uh, cone image and we'll keep it west there uh, touching the eastern tip of Long Island Sunday afternoon into night and uh, tropical storm force winds obviously this is good for the Delmarva because you will get the left uh, side of the storm which will blow water out of the Chesapeake and not into the Chesapeake, which is good. And less chance of tornadoes and wind damage as you have the motion of the storm subtracted from there. So uh, 
there you go. It's going to be less of a concern there. So we'll uh, check back in tomorrow morning, hopefully, and we will see you guys then. Have a good night, and uh, if there are any evacuation orders, follow them, please. Thanks.